Well, like the majority of New South Wales, there's been some incredible scenes here at Club and Angle due to the wet weather. We caught up with the General Manager of Racing, David Watson, to discuss the abandonment of last Saturday's program and the Big 11 event program set down for decision at headquarters this Saturday night. Well, David, as I mentioned, unbelievable scenes here at Club and Angle over the past week, but we are feeling a lot better than the majority, and certainly our thoughts go out to those people suffering a great deal. Yeah, it's um, terrible what we're seeing on TV, uh, those people living in the Camden region. Uh, third time this year, it's incredible what they're suffering. I know uh, even down at Illawarra where I am, there's been a lot of suffering, a lot of flooding. It's an incredible amount of water that comes in such a short space of time and setting up the case. So, yeah, from Club and Angle, especially the locals of the MacArthur and Wollandilly regions, our thoughts are with all those people. And I I'm sure everyone will rally around their friends and, and whatnot and make sure we're all looked after. David, last Saturday afternoon you had to make an executive decision whether we race or abandon. You decided on the latter and it turned out to be the right one. Yeah, it was a bit of a tricky one, um, Mick, because nothing had really set in. We'd had, we'd, the showers had started, the track was in great condition, but the forecast was really bad. Um, I did, yeah, we copped a little bit of criticism making that call really early, but... It was in the interest of the welfare of the animals and the people because there was forecast for some flooding. Um, in the end, it was the right call because by six o'clock, which we've seen before, the viaduct had a metre of water in it. So everyone would have been trapped if we had to continue with the meeting. So in the end, it was a right call. But as I said, first and foremost was always the safety and welfare of, of the animals and all the participants. As a result, we've got five of those races added to this week's big 11 event program it is an outstanding program yeah great racing we've got those three trot group uh, group one finals the 50,000 trot new south wales finals they're really good fields um it would have been a pity a shame to have lost them uh, they're fantastic races a lot of nice up and coming horses i'm sure we're going to see for a lot of years competing in the group one races uh, we also continue with the country final the woods will be renamed the waratah finals um, it was really important because they don't get an opportunity here week in week out they're once a month uh, they're for certain grades that grade doesn't get the opportunity probably only about three times a year so it was really important that we continued there was a few scratchings which were put back into the field um, that they can still come out but hopefully we get a couple of those scratchings don't become scratchings this week and we get a bit of a fuller field and 25,000 I'm sure those country people will be appreciative of us going ahead with the race this weekend yeah David on that point when making decisions whether to race or, or not, you're also taking into account the participants earning a wage. Oh, absolutely. Uh, all those things are taken into consideration. Um, it's really difficult because these are people's livelihoods that you're dealing with and if they can get here, as we've seen today, they'll get here because owners are paying bills, trainers need training fees, they need their percentages, drivers need their, their earnings, so it's really important. Just our staff, a lot of our staff are casual staff, they rely on this uh, to abandon two meetings, which could have been the easy decision today, given the forecast, because people were absolutely gobsmacked that we were still racing. I was. Last night I'd basically given up all hope. There was a couple of metres of water through the viaduct again, but uh, we never got that really heavy rain overnight. Uh, the river went down. Uh, our flood mitigation tanks opened up down there uh, near the training centre. The water got away and the track was in fine fill, so away we went. Yeah, it's also important. Saturday's meeting the track, nothing wrong with it. Today, once again, superb. Yeah, it's, uh, we had maybe over 100 horses work on it yesterday, and all reports were it was really good. We could have worked on it this morning. Look, we did close it this morning just in case. Being that there was a race meeting, they'll get their opportunity to work those horses tomorrow if they need to for the weekend. Um, we've got some trials here tomorrow as well. We've got four or five trials. So, yeah, the track's held up really well. It does in the heavy rain, 245 mil of rain we've had in three days. It's, mm, it's a lot of water. The infield, we can start running a fishing competition there. Yeah, the state of origin one. We'll get ET out here, I think. Yeah, it's an amazing. You can just see, like, you're watching the vision today, how much water is it? Just can't get away. There's some drains over there. It's just sitting in there. It's waiting for that, uh, the, the river to go down a bit further so the water can get away. But no, the track's great. The boys always do a great job. Prize money increase, Dave? Yeah, 20,000 minimum every Saturday night now. So you come here, there's not a race program less than 20,000. Uh, it's a great thing here for Club and Angle and the participants. There's been major increases throughout the state. Level A meetings are now nine and a half. We're at nine eight, uh, nearly nine nine on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, level, um, as I said, level A in the country areas are nine and a half. And I think it, it, it gives the trainers 
uh, a real good business plan to take to the owners, whether they're existing owners, new owners, that every time you race at Menango on a Saturday, you won't race for less than $20,000. Yeah, that's very encouraging. And of course, the new series, the Waratah. Yeah, the Waratah, so the, the country series. Look, Rex Horn and, and John Dumasey were really, really strong on putting money into the country. So when they started the country series, I think they were racing for about four and a half, five thousand in the bush. So the heats back then were eight to ten thousand dollars. So there was a bit of money put into the heats from this club. Um, we've continued with that. I suppose imitation is always the best form of flattery, which with the gallops you've seen with their highway handicaps and their midways, that's basically structured on what we started with 10 years ago. So we've continued with that. I just needed the country series, I think that's a little bit unfair maybe to Newcastle participants and whatnot, like that. they're not really country. Um, so we just wanted to give it a rebrand, something that participants can, instead of just calling the country series, Waratah is the state emblem or the state floral emblem. Um, we could have gone down the blue grape because it's the state fish, but probably didn't have that catchy in the platypus, probably not as catchy either, which is the, the state emblem, uh, animal emblem. But the Waratah, people know what it is, it's the a, a very prominent New South Wales emblem. It relates to the whole state, what that series is all about, and the club work, yeah. I just wanted to rebrand it and give it something everyone can look forward to. I still think where we name this particular racing venue as the Where Horses Fly, can I get the Pegasus? Can I push that one more time? Oh, yeah, we can, we can have a look at that. I think there's the Pegasus floats, isn't there? Um, yeah, I, we're never afraid to try ideas, Michael. Never afraid. Well, David, good to hear that. And once again, your gut feeling was correct last Saturday, so let's hopefully this week it's not called upon. Yeah, it's good to get your gut feeling right every now and then because plenty of times it's wrong.